Right, so this is one of our chosen breeder queens from one of our father sites. Um, good brood pattern. Um, she's been quite successful already this spring. So very docile, um, quite native looking in colour. So we're hoping to breed from her and to get some good characteristics to go through the next generations. So I'm just going to go through the hive now, have a look at each frame and select a frame that has um, multiple young larvae on it and then that's what we're going to try and graph from today. So we've got a nice frame of brood. Bees are nice and relaxed, nice and black. So that's all sealed brood with some eggs. Oh yeah, we've got a queen on there. She's nice and dark. She's a, a year old. Um, there's a few young larvae on there. Let's see if I can find a few more. We generally do 20, 20 graphs per, um, per frame to help the, to get the bees to rear. So I just want to choose a frame that I think I can definitely get 20 from. This one looks a little bit better. Yep, so I think I'll go with this one. So we've got obviously a sealed brood and then here where it's hatched previously there's some eggs and then there is some small small larvae in there and i find the slightly older and darker the frame the slightly easier it is to graft i use one of the chinese grafting tools which has a plastic scoop on it so if the frame's a little bit tougher and a little bit bit more firm I find that it scoops slightly easier when it's a fresh fresh wax frame I find that the um, the tool does penetrate through the bottom of the cell um, making it quite hard to scoop up the the small larvae I'll just put those back while we do this my grafting bench so this is our grafting frame and it's just been modified from a normal, a normal national frame. Um, these bars hold what is basically artificial queen cups. Um, they're just made of plastic and what we'll do is put these into a hive previously, let the bees kind of clean them out and prep them how they want to prep them. It's got a little bit of honey on it. Um, yeah, and then, and then we know that it's basically ready to take a graft. So I find it easier to do it without my gloves on. And we've got, so this is one of our Chinese tools. It's plastic. It's got that little plastic flexible tongue on it. So I generally just give that a little play with that. Just make sure it is flexible. It's got a little push button there. So when you scoop up your... Um, your larvae hopefully scoops up some royal jelly with it as well that will be stuck on the end and then you deposit it into one of these cells by pushing gently with the little push pin up there so it's always a good one to try and get the light so it's kind of pointing into the cells and what I try to do is I look for where the eggs are and then I look at the larvae that surrounds them. So you should find that it's in a pattern and the smaller going into larger. 
and the aim for me generally is to go for the smaller larvae that I can find and ones that look like they have a decent amount of royal jelly in them. So I just put, pop the tool in and there's a larvae on the end with a bit of jelly. So the idea is that you want to try and get a larvae that is um, within a few days old from hatching from an egg. And then we just pop it into the cell and then very gently push it off and try and deposit it somewhere near the center of the bottom of the cell. Um, so the larvae that are only a few days old from hatching from an egg, these are still capable of being fed a diet which will um, determine them being a queen or just a worker. So again, just pop my tool in and larvae on the end. Thumb shaking. <laughs> and I do find if I'm struggling a little bit with a larvae, sometimes the tool's just not quite scooping under or even if I feel that when I've pushed that off, if I feel like I've um, touched the larvae too much or manhandled it in a way, then I will generally just go for another and I'll still put it in that same cell and um, I believe that the bees will choose the, the stronger larvae out of the two and pick that one to rear their cell with. So you can, can kind of give yourself a second chance with it. See, I've missed that one. That one, that happens quite a lot. If your tool kind of scoops the bottom too much and catches, it can flick the larvae up at the wall of the cell. So I'll give up on that one. I don't see the point in trying to catch the same one that you've touched twice because chances are you've damaged it. So this is the chosen one for rearing. Nice and strong. We've got the bottom brood box with the queen inside. We've got a queen excluder. This colony was set up yesterday just to give them a bit of time to realise that their queen pheromones aren't, aren't as um, distributed in this top box. I've put a bit of feed on the top just to stimulate them and give them that energy to draw out the cells. So I'll put that down there. And... Yes, so basically, let's give them a little bit of smoke, get them to go down. So we've got stores on the outside. Uh, we've got pollen, nice frame of pollen and nectar um, near to the brood. Obviously, they need their pollen to feed young bees. And then we have brood. And then there is a frame of mostly sealed brood, but also some larvae. But I've chosen one that doesn't have a lot of very, very young larvae. And that way, again, what with the pheromones of the queen not being quite so strong in this top box, and there not being the pheromones of really young brood, hopefully they'll believe that um, they need a new queen. So this was just kind of my marker frame just to tell me where I want to put my grafting frame. So that sequence carries on the next side as well. And then the grafting side, uh, frame with the cups facing down um, just goes into the middle like that. Push them all together. Today is Friday, so the way I see it, it's 10 days that we leave the grafts inside. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, next week, uh, not next week, the following week, I will come and remove the grass. By this time, they should have been fed and sealed off. Once we've done that, then we'll put them in the incubator and with, within three days, they should start to hatch. So um, once they come out of the incubator, once they've hatched, we have mini nucleus, um, which are just little tiny mini hives and we will make sure they are queenless, ready to accept a queen, and we will um, 
put the new virgin queens in a small queen cage with a bit of marshmallow that gives the bees time to adjust to her scent and know that she's um, not an intruder she's actually a virgin queen that they can use and then the time that they eat through that bit of marshmallow hopefully they're willing to accept her and there's less chance of them attacking her or potentially killing her so that's how we do it and then within we find in the mini nukes it's an average 10 days before she comes into lay um, we do find it's a bit bit longer in the in the full hives why that is we're not really sure but it, it seems to be slightly faster process in the mini nukes once she comes into lay we'll wait until that first lot of brood has been capped over that way we know she's definitely not a drone lay and she's mated well and then we can remove her with a few um, of her workers just to look after her and then we either sell them as single queens or we can put them into one of our larger six frame nukes um, ready to, to sell a nucleus to people who want a new colony of bees.